What's going on you guys? So today I went and got my tires rotated. I have some uneven tread wear. Um, you can see this back tire right here. The tread is not wearing very evenly. This was on the front. These tires aren't very old. I actually only had them for I think about 12,000 miles. I'm really bad about airing up after um, I go wheeling. Sometimes I'll just air them up to like 30. I'll leave them like that for a while and ride around on the freeway so I know that's my bad so to make a long story short I need new tires there's some MVX off-road rims that I saw and there's a dude online I hit him up to today actually on Instagram he's gonna actually meet up with me and I'm gonna pick up the rims for him right now and then the plan is to throw 37s on these are 35s right here on the stock 18 inch trail boss rim so I'm picking up 17 inch rims from him and I'll be throwing 37s. So a little bit smaller rim, a little bit meatier tire. We'll have to fit test it, but I'm hoping that that will eliminate my need for the spacers. So the backspacing on the rim I'm picking up from him is supposed to be adequate. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Damn bro, Amazon Prime is like two days, but add them up, sure. add them up Prime, like same day service. Five hours later. You can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, bro. Whew. That's what you want it, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, 37s. Oh, nice. I'm no. super interested in this kit that you got here, so. Yeah, no, I mean, 2020 Silverado, Dirt King kit. It's a Dirt King long travel kit. Upper control arms, lower control arms. Uh, 2.5 by eight bypasses with a 3.0 uh, by eight race spec uh, bypass. And then just pretty much basic stuff. Dirt King uh, limit straps with Dirt King hoop. Other than that, it's pretty, pretty simple. Thick. Yeah. The tires is fiber works. Yeah. Fiber works front. I have rears also. They're not on the truck yet. I'm waiting because I'm sending it out to get linked. So once the rear stuff goes on, then it'll be like, all right, right now the rear stock. I had some OEM replacements, but I took them off and just kind of got rid of them for now. Other than that, yeah, dirt, um, pretty much dirt king everything. Uh, the front bumper is by Westfab. So it's like three piece, three piece front bumper. Um, all integrated, the top half is, is actually the stock bumper. So like this is the stock bumper that they cut, add the valence, and then we added like all the parking sensors so we could retain all the stock functions and not throw any codes. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It handles so nice, but it's just the rear. Anytime I go out anywhere, it just bucks the rear like crazy. So soon, soon it's going out to Arizona to Cliffs to get linked. So it's going to be got down for like two months. They're going to cut the whole truck in half, um, tube the rear and do all the crazy stuff. And then trust the rear housing and bigger axles and all this other stuff. So our tires have arrived. we got the Toyo tires, open country RT trails. They're 37 by 12 and a half by 17s. So let's see what these are going to look like. Of course with the bronze wheels it's definitely gonna look nice compared to the old 35s in the back 37s in the front 35s in the back for comparison let's go get these bad boys mounted and balanced here she is with the new 17 inch rims with the 37 inch tires looking nice looking good we were able to remove those spacers And this is what she looks like. Ooh, that looks good. The bronze with the with the black lip, it makes the tire look even bigger. I kind of like that optical illusion right there. But man, it's a sweet look. These things are starting to really just look stuffed in there. And then on the front from where the stock bumper was, there's these two little tabs. And I think I'm just gonna take my angle grinder and remove them. I'm not rubbing on it, but when I off-road, I don't want there to be only a half of an inch of space uh, during articulation and whatnot. It's gonna hit that. So I'm gonna just take the angle grinder and remove that little part of the fender liner there. These two little tabs. Because with this, aftermarket bumper I have this is not really necessary it doesn't even need to be here I'm just gonna trim that that piece of plastic and it'll give me a little higher clearance but I definitely like 
the smaller rim, beefier tire, more meat on the bones. It looks great and I'm definitely digging it. What do you guys think? Yeah, proper tires, proper rims. I don't know, man. This truck just, I feel like 37s fit perfectly on the trail bus, aesthetically speaking. One thing I did not check when purchasing these lug nuts is that I didn't get one with a key. So I need to order some lug nuts that I can lock um, so I don't get these rims jacked. And I'm sorry, I don't think I mentioned it earlier. I know someone in the comments will ask what lift I have. I have a Rough Country lift. It's a six inch lift. It is full shocks. It's a spring. It's an entire strut assembly that is four inches on top of the two inch uh, Trail Boss spacers. So I have a six inch lift for those of you that were gonna ask me that question. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. Let's go trim some plastic, see if we can prevent some of this rubbing. I might just, I might just leave it like that. That'll give me some more clearance. I already removed the back part of this mud flap. It doesn't look very pretty, but at least I don't rub there anymore. Um, I was able to zip tie this part of the fender liner. Uh, pulled it back a little bit. I removed this bracket that was right here, and then just cut part of the mud flap. I did that when I installed the 35s. So I don't think I really need to do anything. It doesn't seem like it's rubbing here. It's definitely close, but. Pull this back with another zip tie and get it nice and tight. But I think that's the only trimming I'm gonna do today. So another thing I'm gonna do is equalize all four tires on the truck. Uh, for some reason, when they mounted and balanced the tires, I'm not sure why. Maybe they're just trying to pop that last bead, but they put a ton of PSI in. So according to my gauges here, it says we're at 48, 48, 45, and 51. So it says the max range here of 65 PSI. That's just because of this load range of E. These tires can hold a lot of weight in a high PSI, but I don't want to run them that high. There's a bunch of charts out there where if you know the exact weight of your truck, you can weigh the front of your truck and the back of your truck and then calculate the PSI recommended for your tires. I don't know the exact weight of mine and I'm just going to do it old school with a uh, chalk. So I'm going to do a chalk test and I'm going to make sure that I'm inflated to the proper PSI. You guys have seen this in past videos of mine. You know I love the Morflate kit. Uh, super convenient. The thing that's really cool about this kit is that you can inflate and deflate all four tires at once with this closed system. So it really is convenient. We've got all four tires hooked up and then we can come over here, check out the gauge. Let these kind of equalize for a second here. I'm gonna actually let out a little bit of air, get it down to 42. There we go, 42, close enough. Yeah, we'll call that 42. Now let's do the chalk test. So I'm gonna take a piece of chalk and I'm gonna draw it on the tire across the top here from one side to the other. I'm gonna drive 50 feet forward and then I'm gonna drive 50 feet in reverse and I'm gonna look at the wear on, that, on the chalk. If it's evenly distributed across and it's starting to uh, disappear or wear off evenly, then I'm at the proper PSI. If it is only coming off on the inside of the tire or the outside of the tire, it's gonna be underinflated. If the center of the tire, the chalk is missing there, that means that it's overinflated. So it's an easy way to test uh, the proper PSI with the weight of your specific vehicle and the specific tire setup that you have. This is an old school way to do it. It's nice and easy. Um, so let's go ahead and test it out with 42 PSI with my setup and see how it looks. All right, guys, this is after driving 50 feet. I actually have a little more wear in the center, if anything, but I would say that's actually pretty even. I might go down to 40 and call it good. So I do have one little issue. I noticed a few days after riding around town that I have these little uh, black chunks of rubber on the inside of my rim. And so once I looked a little bit closer, 
I saw that the tie rod right here is actually rubbing against my tire. Everything cleared to actually tighten the rim on to the hub. The brake caliper fits in there. The upper control arm fits in just fine, but the tie rod is touching the tire. So I was getting a little bit of rubber flakes, but I'm really glad that I caught that because this is touching the tire. There's no gap in the tie rod there at all. So I decided to order some new wheel spacers. The wheel spacers I had on before were two inches and these are one inch. Uh, I don't think I need much more than that. All right, I just got back from the tire shop. I didn't really feel comfortable installing those spacers myself. They required uh, that you trim the factory studs for the spacers to fit. So I took it to my local tire off-road shop that I trust here in town. And um, they torqued on my wheel spacers, trimmed down the factory studs, did a wheel alignment, checked the caster, toe-in, camber, and thrust angle on all my tires, it got me dialed in. And I'm not touching the tie rod. Let's check it out. As you can see now, I have space there between the tire and the tie rod where before it was touching. So for this lift, they recommend that you have 20s, 20 inch rims, but heck no, I want the 17 inch rims with more meat on the tire, but it came out exactly how I wanted it. I did also have to do a little more trimming on the front. So I do have this front grumper that's a high clearance bumper. And I did trim the inside section as well. So I took my angle grinder and just removed the inner fender liner there. And then I just completely removed the mud flap. So this is usually the main part that's rubbing when you add bigger tires on these Silverados. But I think it looks pretty clean. What do you guys think? Thank you to Adam Up for being my wheel plug and hooking me up with the folks over at MVX. I'm really digging these wheels and tires. I uh, appreciate it. And thank you Redland Tire Pros. I'm just gonna throw their name out there for getting my spacers all dialed in and ready to go. Make sure to hit a thumbs up if you found this video helpful or entertaining and subscribe. That helps me as a YouTuber. So I really appreciate it and stay tuned. The next video that I'll be posting for the Trail Boss Silverado series is right here. You're just over here chilling on this box right now. And uh, this guy is just lounging on. But uh, stay tuned for that one. Spoiler alert, it's an exhaust. And hit the notification bell, all those YouTube things. Comment below, I always respond. And I appreciate you guys, I'll end the video like that. Get outside, stay hydrated, and keep on moving. Smack it. No, don't really smack it.